Um, I think that one thing a lot of business or early business owners, I shouldn't say business owners, early real estate agents who aren't business owners yet, they're agents. And there's a difference. Um, do is they take the simple route of branding themselves as Eric Preston Real Estate or John Carroll Real Estate, right? Did you do this in the early days? Yeah. Yeah, I think most people do because it's easy. It's like you're solo. You're not really thinking too long term yet. And so one of the things I encourage my clients to do is think long term with their brand and take a step back because it's going to be way harder to change your brand later. And anyone who's been through a rebrand, myself included, I started my marketing agency as EVP Media and my website was ericbpreston.com. I wholeheartedly regretted that later. And so this is what I tell people is I know so many people who come to hate their personal brand because they realize that it traps them. Welcome, everybody, to the Beyond the Sale podcast. This week, I'm super excited to have Eric Preston on the podcast. Eric Preston is a digital marketer in the space of real estate, and um, I'm really excited to share you share him with you guys. And Eric is the CEO of Agent Launch. And Agent Launch, I believe, I'll let him explain too, is a digital marketing company that helps realtors go from basically from start to finish to really to scale their business. But um, further, without further ado, Eric, um, thanks for joining us today. Cool. Thanks for having me, John. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Eric, um, so let's just start off um, with talking about Agent Launch. Um, I, when I heard the concept of you starting it and what you guys are doing, can you explain a little bit more about what that is and how you are helping right now agents with the digital marketing arena? Yeah, sure. So um, Agent Launch does, I mean, a lot of things. And I think the reason we did that was not because it was easy to do it that way. In fact, it was it's we chose the hard route. Um, but the reason is, is that I think agents need a lot of things to have success in this industry because real estate is very different. If I was generating leads for a dentist, you know, someone could come in next week for a cleaning. In real estate, you're generating leads and that person's buying a house from you in often three, six, nine, sometimes 12 months. And so if you want to make these things effective, you have to have a more holistic solution. So um, like at Agent Launch, we, I mean, we have a team of 20, we have over 150 active clients. Um, we do everything from lead generation to systems builds. We do recruiting of two different roles. We train those roles for ISAs, ROAs. Uh, we coach our clients on how to build an effective YouTube channel. We even edit their videos for them and build brand assets for their videos. So there's a lot we do under one roof. I mean, the first conversation I usually have with our clients is, hey, let's talk about your brand. Um, is your brand going to scale with you or are you going to have to change it later? Does your social media line up with you know, your website, your YouTube, how does that all look? That's the starting point. Then let's go into your website, your lead generation that goes into your systems. And how are those leads going to be approached and nurtured? Well, let's, we train on sales every week. So, I mean, we, we try to focus on the whole ecosystem because I think that's genuinely what people need. And um, we take care of all the technical stuff. So that business came out of more of a necessity than, hey, we're just going to build this one fancy little shiny object and sell it like crazy we decided to take the route of building a lot of stuff under one roof. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, and I think because I, I kind of saw the uh, the evolution of that too, from us starting to work with you through eXp and then and then seeing how, how well we started with YouTube and then how you started helping people and seeing what they actually need to be successful and then putting those those tools in place for them to to help them. Um, so as that's great. So you kind of, we kind of went right into the right into a lot of the questions that I had. But if we back if we back out from there, how did you get started in digital marketing per se? And also, how did you find the real estate sphere? And why did you decide to start doing digital marketing inside of real estate? You want me to give you a quick two minute two minute background? I'll uh, I'll try I'll try to make it quick. So I got my foot on in this industry just kind of. Um, by accident, I think as most people get into most industries, um, I was about to take a job. It was, it was going to be my first like office job outside of being a bartender, bar manager for six years. Um, so I worked in hospitality for a long time. Um, I got approached on LinkedIn by this sales manager from a real estate marketing agency. Um, I was three weeks into an interview process with this other company. They interviewed me that day, sent me an offer the next day. I took it, um, cause I felt like a good fit. 
Um, long story short, I was salesperson number two on that company. We grew to a sales team of 18, team of about 80 something. Um, I was given the role from the COO to take over her role of actually going out to real estate offices and um, teaching agents how to run Facebook ads. So that took me down a journey of learning from, you know, multi hundred million dollar business owners who were our CRO and director of marketing on how to use Facebook effectively. And then I started teaching that to agents and I did about 150 uh, in-person slash online workshops, probably 120 of them were in person. So I was flying all around the country, teaching agents how to run Facebook ads. Towards the end of that job, I was there for two years. I started to get my real estate license with the other top sales guy um, who I had brought into the company. Then um, we both left that company. We started selling real estate ourselves, doing some of the things we had been teaching and talking about and it w really worked well for us and then what happened was we were kind of the young guys in the office doing this new thing with google and a lot of people wanted to know what we we're doing so we started teaching people and then we turned that into a, a course and uh that course we sold you know we did probably a million dollars in sales of um courses uh over the years doing teaching google ads facebook ads a lot of stuff and then um him and i like we were still really great friends but we had we kind of parted ways eventually and he went and did something in a different industry and I kind of stayed the course with this, but I turned that kind of done do it yourself education style into more of a done for you model, um, which is backwards in my industry for most people. <laughs> um, but I just had so many people who were like, Eric, I just want you to do this for me. So then I started doing Google ads for people and then that turned into bringing in ISAs and renting them out to our clients. Then that turned into us recruiting ISAs Then that turned into YouTube coaching, and then that turned into video editing, that turned into branding, and then that turned into art program, how it is now. And um, yeah. You know, when I, when I, that's awesome. And thanks for sharing that. So when I got into real estate, I kind of came from the, and you know this, I think, from the perspective of like sales, outbound calling, grinding really hard, not much marketing, don't spend money on Facebook, it's a waste of time. Don't spend money on on uh, social media, it's a waste of time. Call people, connect with them, make contacts, contacts equal contracts, that kind of scenario. However, that's great if you, if you wanna have a job for the rest of your life and you wanna just grind yourself down to dust. Um, <laughs> this is what I've learned through the process um, of that and now how I'm evolving into something different, something through, with your help as well. Um, but I think, if we back up from that, from people like myself in those it kind of coming from that strategy or that thought process of a sales process, why is it so important to have, sure, I think, I think it's a place for that, but why is it so important to have an online presence and a marketing strategy? Because I, I believe that you're, you're the opposite side of what I, what I thought before. Now you're like the other side of it. Why is it so important to actually have that as well, especially when you're getting started, but in general? Well, John, I will say like your philosophy, whether it's current or past is the philosophy you need to have even with online marketing, because the best people at this are the ones that have that background, the kind of, they know how to get on the phones. They're comfortable with that. They know what to say. That's what a lot of people miss when they get into online marketing is they think like people are just going to come to them and be excited to work with them. That's not the case. You still have to do the trust building and build rapport because at the end of the day, um, you know, you asked the question, why, why do you need an online presence? Well, the simplest way I can put it is how many reviews does someone read when they buy like a $30 thing on Amazon? Probably the average person reads quite a lot of reviews. So how many, how many reviews do you think someone's going to read when they choose the agent who's going to help them buy the most expensive thing they're ever going to buy? Yeah. So yeah, as, 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 as a simple as I can put it, like, the last time you bought a toothbrush on Amazon, like how many reviews did you read or, or soap or something so basic socks, you know, you, you, you read those reviews and you think people aren't going to look, you look you up and check you out online. So I'd say that that's the important part. And you know, they better like what they see because they're going to be very quick to dismiss you knowing that there's hundreds of other realtors they could potentially work with. Um, obviously you want to give yourself an opportunity to build trust with them on the phone or through video but it's important to have your online presence dialed in so that when they do check you out, um, you know, they like what they see. And you guys are a great example. I mean, you Google the Carol home team. What do you see? Like a hundred and something, 170 
reviews or something like that. I, I remember the last time I saw it was like 150, so I'm sure, so for sure it's more now. Yeah, and then so, and th yeah, and I, I completely agree with that. Uh, comp and I think what is that? What is that? Tr how does that trust? I know when we first started this conversation, you were talking about brand. We start off with brand. So what does that mean when someone comes to you and they start talking about, okay, well, I need to get some kind of notoriety online. I need to build some trust and some brand with the client. So that, that can start off with, with, and I think it's where I started off with reviews, asking my clients for reviews at the end of a transaction. Also realizing that the reviews don't necessarily always have to be clients. They can be people that I've worked with in the past, with vendors, that sort of thing. But so that's kind of where I started. But if you go from there, where, how do we start building trust with the clients or with the general public for when they're looking for a realtor that they're going to choose us? Sorry, how do, how do people go about looking for that? How do, how do you start, I guess, how does somebody start building trust or starting to have a digital platform, okay. building a brand? And so, sir, we can start off with reviews. Yeah. I think that's important, but where does it go from there? Well, I think, I think like I have a branding exercise I like to do with all my clients and I can walk you through that. Um, yeah. I think that one thing a lot of business or early business owner, I shouldn't say business owner, early real estate agents who aren't business owners yet, they're agents and there's a difference, um, do is they take the simple route of branding themselves as Eric Preston real estate or John Carroll real estate, right? Did you do this in the early days? Yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah. most people do because it's easy. It's like you're solo. You're not really thinking too long term yet. And so one of the things I encourage my clients to do is think long term with their brand and take a step back because it's going to be way harder to change your brand later. And anyone who's been through a rebrand, myself included, I started my marketing agency as EBP Media and my website was ericbpreston.com. I wholeheartedly regretted that later. And so this is what I tell people is I know so many people who come to hate their personal brand because they realize that it traps them. So think five years from now. How are you going to feel when you have a team of six to 10 agents, let's say, and you say you're really successful because I assume you get into the business because you want to be really successful. So you have a team of six to 10 agents and you're the John Carroll real estate team or the Eric Preston real estate team. Like, what do you think every single person who comes to the Eric Preston real estate team, who do they want to work with? Well, they're always going to work with, they're always with, the work with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so it traps you in a way that you can't really get out of it. Now, I know people who benefit from a personal brand. I have clients who do that and they're usually building coaching programs or a downline at ESP, or they're doing something else where their personal brand does make sense. So there's not a right or a wrong way to do this. I just encourage people to think long-term about what they want. Cause I'd say most people I talk to have this vision where they want to like step, step back from parts of their business eventually so they can have more of a lifestyle. Cause the reality is your first couple of years as a real estate agent, you're not going to have much of a lifestyle. If you want to be successful, you're going to be in the grind. So, um, the exercise I do is lifestyle brand or personal brand, make a choice and stick to that. And now a lifestyle brand is something like living in Vero beach team or Vero beach real estate group. Now, um, a personal brand would obviously be Eric Preston real estate group or Eric Preston real estate. Um, the middle ground is kind of where you're at, where it's like the Carroll home team where Carroll could be like, it doesn't necessarily mean like John Carroll per se. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a hundred percent obvious it's you. So you're kind of in the middle, um, which is totally okay. And I think most people do that. Um, but I just encourage you to think about it and then align the stars early. So if you're going to be living in Vero beach team or something living in Vero beach, real estate team or it could be living in Miami team or life in Miami or something like that. And I own a lot of these domains cause I like these brands. Um, but, uh, I think I own life in Miami, Florida.com or something like that. But, um, the reason these domains and brands work really well is it's a lifestyle brand. You're not making it about you. You're making it about where you live. And that allows you to create content around being an ambassador about where you live. Uh, it allows you to verbal your um, website to people really easy. Like I know yours is pretty easy to verbal too, but you can say, just go to life in Miami, Florida.com. Check out all the properties available, right? This is the life in Miami, Florida team. And you, you can get people behind your brand. You can build a team around your brand. They can feel connected to your brand. It's hard for people to feel connected and inspired by your personal name or your personal brand, right? So think that through and buy the domain first, start with the domain, 
if you say life in Miami, Florida, that's what I want my brand to be. Buy life in Miami, Florida.com. Don't do dot co. Don't do dot something else. Buy the dot com. It has authority. Make your email Eric at life in Miami, Florida.com. Make your Instagram at life in Miami, Florida. Make your YouTube at life in Miami, Florida. Make your, um, um, what am I missing here? Your Google My Business, like you can make your Google My Business like Eric Preston dash Life in Miami, Florida dash EXP Realty. But do you put that on a Google Doc and like make sure they align because I find what most people have is they actually have three brands and they don't even know it. And um, so in some cases that's okay because you've been doing it for a long time and it's working and changing is too much of a hassle. So there's a fine line to draw of like, does it make sense to change or not? Oftentimes changing is a huge pain because... You lose your SEO if you've been working on it. Like, there's a lot of negatives to changing. Um, so I encourage people to just think about that stuff early and brand yourself and be consistent because that's the only way you can build a brand is if you're consistent. Keep changing. It's going to be yeah. tough. And then, and then just a sh question for myself. And then you're right. So if if you kind of you kind of pigeonhole yourself in if you if you have it your name or you want something where everybody. I was just talking to somebody last week on the podcast and he has his brand urban cool right it's not it's nothing to do with him right mm -hmm. and and so his team has a, a good sense of his a good sense of community with his team his brand his team can you know understands the brand can get behind the brand and so that's that i agree with you that's important and i was actually talking with our social media director of like okay so what if we what if i wanted to change my brand he's like like now no i don't think so it's it's too we're too far gone i think the you're cat's too out far the along john <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so um so that's that's helpful that's re that's really helpful so now like let's if we take a step further so we got we have the brand um we have the google domain we have the domain we have the instagram we have facebook we have google my business um, now I want to start, you know, connecting with people. Sure. But now I also want to start building some notoriety, some, some video content, maybe some social media content, something out there. Um, what, what sites do you feel if you were someone getting started or even somebody that was in the position that I was maybe doing, you know, 60, 70 deals a year, but doesn't have a social media presence or really not a good one. Where do we, where do you start from there? What's the most effective way to move forward. Okay. This is a good question. And I have a very strong opinion for you. Um, I think what most people do is they, and I want to be very clear about this. Most people compare their first quarter to someone else's fourth quarter using football terms for your audience. Um, but it's important to understand that when you're comparing your yourself to someone who's way farther along than you, and you see them on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, and everywhere, and you're like, I need to be like that. That's not how they got there. Like, you need to start with getting focused. And usually that's just one platform. Have you ever heard the term simple scales and fancy fails? Yeah. So, like, getting fancy at first is a sure path to failure. I got started with just being good at YouTube, and that carried me a very long way. If you want to get started with video, the only thing you need to do is focus on YouTube and then focus on repurposing your YouTube videos for social media. You can go to my YouTube channel. I actually have a video dropping on branding on Monday and you can see how I do that with my Instagram. But just focus on being good at YouTube and the only way you're going to get better at YouTube is through repetition. It's the only way. So you have to do it many times over. And the only better way to get better at YouTube faster is repetition with a feedback loop. So that's what we provide our clients is you, we give you like the scripts, the equipment, the, the what structure so you can set up a filming space, basic stuff. And then we just get you to start making them. And then I don't say go make five videos. It's like make one video at a time, bring it to my coaching call. I'm going to give you feedback. I'm not going to give you every piece of feedback you need. I'm going to focus on the big things. And I promise after three, four, five videos, you're actually going to be pretty good. And most people don't understand that. They think YouTube is so hard and it's really difficult because it's long form. But the reality is, is YouTube, the content you make lasts years, you know, and like your wife, Rachel has been a really good example of that. Um, you guys have had some videos that have worked for you for a long time. And I know she's, you know, working with me a little bit more again on tightening up some of those details and it's working. And it's like, so 
start with YouTube. Forget about Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all that stuff. Like, sure, if you want to build a bit of a, a channel and just repurpose some content there just to get started, but don't don't make yourself too busy at first. Just there's way more value in just being amazing at one platform than there is trying to be everywhere. And that's the biggest misconception in real estate, in my opinion. And I've talked about this for years, ever since I was back at that marketing agency doing workshops, I was talking about this because everyone's always like, they think in their head, the strategy is I need to be everywhere. And it's so far from the truth, in my opinion. It's like, there's so much more compounding value in just being really good at one thing. Just really yeah. good at that one platform. I see people too in circles that I'm in, they, they're, they're putting out content for, uh, the content I think is help. It's good. It's, it's helpful, but it's just content to put out content. And I think ultimately there's not a intention with the content they're putting out. I think what's really cool with you guys, what you've helped us out with is, is, and I'd love to talk more about this, but like with YouTube, we're, we're seeing a direct ROI on our time. Like, you know, we're like not monetizing the, the channel per se at this point yet, but we're definitely seeing direct, we're an ROI on our time and, our, and the, the attention that we're putting on YouTube, which is phenomenal. And I think it's become almost one of the larger lead sources that we have at the moment, right? So, which is, which is fantastic. Um, but I think a lot of times people are spending money on social media or working with a social media manager but they're, they're putting stuff out there, but it's almost a marketing towards like building brand awareness, which is, I think is probably important in some regard, but they're really not seeing as much ROI from that time that they're putting into it or that money that they're putting into that uh, uh, social media manager. Yeah. So how do you think about that? I know that you can kind of do both of what, what, what we've been working on, but how do you think about starting off with that? And then how do you think about building brand for future and also to get direct leads to you. Yeah. So I think there's, there's really like two things there. One is, um, what I tell all of my clients, if they're starting out on YouTube is don't expect anything for six months. They say, what's the secret to a happy marriage? Low expectations. <laughs> totally. <laughs> don't, totally. <laughs> don't, don't expect a lot from YouTube for someone just told someone just told me it was just I thought it was fascinating. The definition of suffering is having expectation expectations and not meeting those expectations. That's the Buddhist definition of suffering. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah. So my that's what I tell everyone. If you have results, you're gonna be stoked, but set the expectation on yourself that nothing's gonna happen with YouTube for six months. And that could very well be the case. Where that can change is if you're doing a lot of lead generation um, and I know you guys do Google ads and we do Google ads for our clients. So we're generating leads, um, at a certain volume and scale. And so if you actually use your YouTube videos, and this is what makes YouTube different is like your videos are hosted on a link. So you can just send that link to people. So the first video we get our clients to make is pretty much a, how to use our website to save a lot of time, like five hours a week. Um, and we talk about the first video is talking about the save search feature and why it's so important to dial that in and how we're going to help you do that. And so we, we were actually just writing our drip campaigns yesterday with chat GPT in a humorous tone. And, uh, that was really fun, but basically you may make your videos and they may not take off in the algorithm. That doesn't usually happen for most people right away. I have had some clients where it has, but I don't set that expectation. Usually it takes months and months to build yourself up and your reputation up on YouTube, but you can send those videos to people. So I always talk about deployment. That's one of the main themes with YouTube. I always discuss is how are you deploying your content from a sales perspective? Because if you just let your videos sit on YouTube and you don't do anything with them, yeah, you, you don't expect anything for six months, but if you put your YouTube videos up and you start using them in the sales process, it's like. Everyone who's done online lead gen has had the hand in the face. I'm just browsing objection, right? So a great way to handle that is, well, there's a few ways, but uh, one of the ways that people are really firm, like, I don't want to talk to you right now. You can say, Hey, no worries, John. I know you're likely very early in your process. Actually, most people who sign up on our website are, 
would it be helpful based on where you're at if I just sent you a video I made on the top five neighborhoods to invest in in Vero Beach this year? What do you think they're going to say? Because they're going to get you off the phone. So they agree to it. So you, you basically make them feel validated. You understand where they're at, then you agree to it. They agree to it. And you say, cool, I just want to confirm your phone number so I can send that to you in a text. Is this the right number? Confirm their number, send it to them in a text. Thanks for our discussion today. Then you have a relationship with them over text and you could potentially follow up on that video to make sure that they actually watched it. That video is going to give you an opportunity for you to build trust with them without them having the pressure of you talking to them over the phone. So this is like, one, you can send your videos out in your drip campaigns. Two, you can use them as a manual outreach in the sales process based on that specific person's needs. And once you have, once you have a, a database of content, so you have like, say you have 20 videos like you guys do, then you, you, your ISA in your case, or whoever's working your leads can have those on the back burner for whatever someone's objection is like, oh, I just, you know, I, I'm, I don't know if I, what I can afford yet. Okay, great. Would it be helpful if I connected you with a mortgage broker or even sent you a cool video on like why this is important or. It, you can just like tailor your approach to um, their objections and use your videos intelligently. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, help, that's really helpful. So not just not just creating content to uh, on Facebook just to create or, or on YouTube just to create content, but also creating the content with a purpose um, for, inside the database, but also to attract um, people maybe moving to a certain area or, or for whatever reason. I think that leads me into the next question. So we have that, that database reason why, how we are gonna use the videos and it's with the link and we can share the link to the people. But what are some other ways that you are using YouTube inside of Agent Launch or with your students want to, want, I guess, to get leads, but also other thoughts on video um, to attract people, to build brands, to build awareness, um, how to build, to get sellers, you know, interested in se maybe sellers. How are you, or, um, through education, what, what, how are you thinking how that evolves f from database to leads to brand awareness? As far as like the content strategy. So yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. I think like the. The cool thing about video is you can really tailor your message to your target audience. So like, I know you work with listings primarily. So having potentially a video that precedes your listing appointment that pre sells them is a good idea. Having content that just tells sellers how to get more for their house through a proven process that you've created, right? So like, if you create content like this and you have an audience that's going to appeal to a seller and it's going to say, wow, this guy, John really knows this stuff. Like if we list our house, we should do it with him. So it builds authority. And that that's the big thing about, um, YouTube is it builds authority really quickly. I, I, I don't say this as a joke. People just see on YouTube and they think, you know, everything like I, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like people have come to me and just think like, I know everything about Google ads or everything about a certain topic because I made a YouTube video about it. It was the same thing when I used to do public speaking. It's like the second you get on stage in front of a hundred people, people just assume, you know, what you're talking about. They assume, you know, everything. And like, fortunately for me, I do feel like I know a lot about these things and I am credible to, to talk about them. But I did notice even in the early days, it was like, I, I was kind of surprised at that effect because it's like, just cause you're on that platform saying something, people give you more credibility. Um, and it's interesting cause you have to be careful for that reason. Cause it's like, there's a lot of people are spewing a lot of BS out there too. But I think in, in this case, you can cater your message to your audience, whether it's investors, sellers, out of town buyers, whatever it is. And then you can leverage that content to build trust with them and, and, and make your outreach a little more tailored. Interesting. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Like, like you have just, I think we're just, we're skewed to Hollywood or being on video that we, we put people on a pedestal that they're on, it's on, so true. on camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, I, I mean, I do it myself. I'm guilty of it as well. Um, but you're right. It's just, it's just, they're just normal people and just doing the same thing well, that we're doing. So, and it's another reason to like, to, to actually get on video because it's just, if, I mean, if it has an effect, 
then you know it's become how powerful it could be it's the same with followers and subscribers right it's like i think uh i always steer people away from trying to focus so much on that because it's really about like i have so many clients with just a few hundred subscribers who do so many deals from youtube and it's like it's not all about that because a lot of people who watch your stuff are not necessarily subscribed it doesn't work that way on youtube people find your content more from search and recommended videos than they do from like being a subscriber um but but the effect's the same like you know there's a lot of people out there who buy instagram followers and that's really easy and cheap to do and like i remember working with a guy with like 120,000 followers and i was like i'm and he had like some articles written about him and i was like wow this guy's legit and then i as i started working with him he was kind of pushing me to do some of this buying followers getting articles written about me and i realized it was all fake and i was like oh damn like i got sucked into that too and i kind of know what i'm doing so i um I don't like that stuff. Um, like for me, I've never, I've never taken part in that. Um, but I see the purpose why some people do it is because it does give you that kind of credibility. So you just got to be, I think you got to be careful, but either way, not without getting too sidetracked on that, I think, um, just having video content out there at a certain scale does give you a lot of credibility. Yeah. So, so I agree. So, um, question for you with regards to the type of videos we're making videos I think this could be helpful to the audience too. So we're, we're doing videos on, from podcasts, getting, getting, connecting with people that are credible people that have been doing this at a high level and sharing the information, Just kind of sharing the audience that I, I'm connected with. It's uh, be helpful to, to other realtors. Um, we're doing information videos about our area. That's been helpful for us too. Um, but you're also talking about, and I see you do these as well, of just sharing to a camera of what you know and getting credibility based upon, like for instance, you were just talking about like, what I know about moving to the area or working with sellers and why sellers should position their property a certain way to get the absolute most they can for the property. Like how important are those videos or how, do you see those videos or, or categorize videos differently and for different reactions from audiences too? Is that yeah. even a, do you even yeah. think about it that way? So I would cat, I would bucket your content in three ways. Um, the first and biggest is become an ambassador of where you live. Show off the best neighborhoods and your opinion, like the pros and cons of living there. Um, reasons why some people love it here or don't love it here. Like just become a source of truth around your city, county area, whatever area you serve. Um, the second pill, so that's the first pillar. The second pillar is strategies and tactics. So basically how to get more for your home, like, you know, how to navigate multiple offers as a buyer to seller, like more strategic things that paint you as really like an expert. And then the third pillar is, uh, properties in the market itself. So like, if you want to do market updates, talk about, pro I, I don't love the market update. I love the, like, what $600,000 gets you in Vero Beach today. And then you can literally go through a property that's listed and tour it and, like, talk about it and showcase why it's listed at that price. Or you can talk about the market within that. But, like, that's what people want to see. They want to see information about your area, whether it's businesses, locations, dog parks, coffee shops, restaurants just general stuff about your area. They also want to see boots on the ground, like properties. How's the market changing? What's happening in the market right now? And then they want to see strategies and tactics around like, how do I actually like get the most for my money? How do I, um, you know, find off market properties, like things like that. So those are the three buckets I would say are the primary ones for most people. Obviously it can, it can change, but it's usually within there, like strategies and tactics could be catered to investors or something specific within that niche. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's helpful. That's really helpful to, just to interpret it that way. Um, and then when, when you're so for moving forward for agent launch and I know you're with EXP, I know that you're um, helping agents as well um, go from start to to, you know, I, I've seen it like for people to go for over a hundred transactions and being helpful building a brand and, a, and scaling systems and processes, which I think a lot of people have a hard time doing. 
Um, but what's next for you guys? I've, I've seen the evolution of, of Eric Preston just helping people become, have more, a, more of a digital footprint, be, uh, helping people with, with ads and that sort of thing. But how do you see the company moving forward? How are you, what, how are you helping more people? What's, what's the plan for you guys? Three year plan. Um, we actually have a lot of cool stuff coming in the next couple months. Um, so outside of that, I don't like to think too far ahead because things change so much. Um, but yeah, we have some pretty cool stuff happening. Um, and so I'll probably be doing one of the things we're doing is we're integrating, um, AI into our nurture process for our clients. So we have a company we're working with on creating like a custom, uh, basically prospecting AI bot, um, that's going to take some of that pressure off of the ISA slash the agent. So that's the first thing in the pipeline right now, which will complement a lot of what we do. And the second thing's a totally new thing which will be, I, I, don't, I actually can't say right now, but um, it'll be, I'll be running a webinar about it in the near future. Um, and it's going to be a really interesting way to build authority in your market. And I think it'd be actually great for you guys. Um, and I can tell you maybe more about it offline, but um, that's really what we're doing is diversifying within the model we have. We really like the model we have. It's an ownership model, meaning everyone can, have full insight and access into what's going on on the back end, what we build. Um, there's no black box like most agencies and how we're kind of different is we blended like a traditional marketing agency that has done for you services with a coaching program to really complement those services so we can really make it work. Um, the next thing will be a, a fully new, like we talked about the Google ads, the systems, the recruiting, the YouTube, this will be a whole new thing that'll help people essentially build a unique value proposition and market it effectively. Um, so it's not going to be a traditional type of funnel. It'll be something totally new and I'm really, really excited about it. It's something I've done a lot of. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to, to hear about it. And, uh, and I definitely will ask you about it at, offline. Um, and then, so if people want to connect with you, learn more about that sort of thing, learn about how, um, you can help them, um, build a brand, um, help them with YouTube content, help them, um, become an authority in their marketplace or even an authority in their state like um i've seen that happen as well um how do they connect with you i uh, and how can they reach out just go to our website agentlaunch.com you can click get started and uh book a intro call with us that intro call is uh very quick it'll just be basically a decision if we can work together or not uh, and then we can set up a, a longer call with uh, either myself or um someone on my team um where we can talk about what that looks like Cool. Yeah. So, um, well, I really appreciate your time. I, I've, we, me and Rachel and our team, uh, in, at a whole, we've really benefited so much for just being partnered with you and connecting with you and, and the time that we, I know we get this, it's not much, but we get to spend and learn from you. It's, it's been really helpful. So thanks. Thanks so much for that. And thanks for spending the time with us and sharing with our community. Um, and, um, we'll talk with you soon. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, John. Appreciate the time.